வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் பயாலஜிக்கல் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் இன் பர்டிகுலர் வி வெர் லுக்கிங் அட் போன் ஆஸ் அ பயாலஜிக்கல் மெட்டீரியல் அண்ட் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ வி டிஃபைண்ட் தி எலாஸ்டிக் மாடுலர்ஸ் the shear modulus and the relationship between elastic modulus and shear modulus using poisson's ratio we defined the limitations of these in terms of modeling the biological material as a hookian material or yes. so in this video we'll be looking at the stress strain curve or the stress strain relationship for biological materials we will give some examples of engineering materials for comparison but that's where the comparison stops so our aim here is to let you get a sense of the biological material for that you need a comparison material so we use some engineering materials as comparison so you have an idea of because we are engineers and we like to build things and we like to have an idea of uh, the strength of the materials that we use in the objects that we are in the products that we fabricate right but what about the body that is a product of evolution what about that right so we can come we we still need some basis for comparison so we'll compare that with other engineering materials mechanical properties of common materials usually the engineering materials and mechanical properties of some biological materials so if you plot the stress and the strain for materials example being some engineering material let's take steel or some engineering material there is a particular point until which the stress and strain are related linearly right we'll call this point p that is elastic or hookian behavior there is a linear relationship between stress and strain until this point p which is the proportional limit the slope of course because it is linear then the slope is a constant right the slope is constant that not that's the slope it's essentially a straight line that slope what is that slope we know what that slope is that is the elastic modulus or the young's modulus y in general the higher the elastic modulus or the young's modulus the stiffer or the less compliant the material is most engineering materials right so this is something that we know by our study of engineering materials right? as the stress keeps increasing as the stress keeps on increasing the stress strain relationship becomes non linear from here for example here it's no longer linear it can be considered to be linear at specific limits or it can be somewhat piece wise linear but that's a material you know material to material variation will be there in that non linearity so it's better to assume a general non linear behavior for engineering materials beyond that proportional limit right and that continues until the elastic limit so that means that there is a point beyond the proportional limit after which if you stop applying the stress the material will go back to its original state so it still exhibits elastic behavior just that in this regime in this regime the relationship is not linear it's a non linear spring or it's a it's exhibiting non linear property but it still is elastic okay the object returns to its initial length when the stress is removed so there is no permanent deformation this is called as elastic limit but suppose you keep applying further stress what happens that's something that we need to see right so in both these linear and non linear regimes if you relax or if you remove the stress the bonds are totally relaxed and there is no rearrangement of atoms so essentially it goes back to its original state so there is no damage right but if i keep applying stress beyond the elastic limit there is what is called as 
because you are beyond the elastic limit, beyond the elastic uh, regime, you have what is called as permanent limit or permanent uh, change or deformation called as plastic deformation. Now, once you reach beyond that elastic point or elastic limit, the object will not go back to its original st state. Right? The shape of the object will be different and it will remain different. Right? And you further apply, if, if there is a point at which beyond the elastic limit, if you further apply stress, there is a particular point at which a lot of elongation can happen a lot of elongation can happen with a very small change in stress. For very small changes of stress, the elongation will be very high, right. This is the yield point. From this point onwards, if I want a greater uh, elongation, I only need to apply very small amounts of stress, right. Something uh, that is mind boggling, something that is weird because earlier I had to apply large amounts of stress suddenly once you so that is you have to go till that yield point after which this becomes like magic right. Of course, uh, this is of course uh, then uh, you if you keep pushing it beyond a limit there is uh, you know fracture or failure of the material that happens. Of course, this is a general stress strain curve this varies between materials right. So, they do look different for different materials different engineering materials such as ceramics, metals, elastomers because they are structurally different at the nano or micro levels at the nano level they are structurally different right. So, they will exhibit different properties. Ceramics have a linear stress strain relationship with the large Young's modulus, right. And the fracture point appears only a little into the nonlinear elastic uh, region, right, for smaller values of uh, strain less than 0 0.1. Bone can be modeled or can be compared to a ceramic under many approximations, under many assumptions, bone behaves almost like a ceramic. Metals have a smaller elastic modulus and a large non-elastic and plastic regime. So, fun, something to keep in mind. So, look at this is ceramic and this is metal, right. Polymers, right, they have this kind of a characteristic. They distort greatly even with small stresses, right. These are very small stresses. They distort to a great action. So, the deformation that they go through is very high, right, in polymers, elastomers, rubber, In this, the material property is such that that tangled chain molecules are straightened out. So, the so called toe region, something that we will revisit when we are looking at tendons, right. We will be discussing models of nonlinear and as elasticity in the toe region of the tendon, right. Something to keep in mind is that blood vessels are elastomers. So, they they exhibit this kind of a property. Now, let us take some time and uh, compare the biomaterial of our interest for this part of the course which is bone with some engineering materials whose properties we know very well. Right. Now, let us look at concrete. So, if you keep comparable units, concrete has 16.5 units of elastic modulus, compact bone is having a higher elastic modulus, it is about 18, right. Compact bone means not the entire bone, this part of the bone is called as the compact bone or the cortical bone, okay. That property is what we are studying, compact bone means cortical bone. Of course, for trabecular bone that varies to a relatively much smaller number because the trabecular bone is spongy, you do expect this value to be a very small number. So, that is fine. Compare that with steel, of 
course, steel will have a higher uh, modulus. Right. And the compressive strength of concrete is about 21 units. For compact bond, it is about 117, almost 8 to 10 times, about 8 times the compressive strength of comparable comparable Young's modulus, but about 8 times the compressive strength. Now, of course, we discussed this when we discussed the bone properties, we said that bones have very high strength in compression and much lesser strength in tension and they are the weakest in shear, which is why many of the fractures happen due to shear stress or application of force in the shear direction. So, something to keep in mind, right. So, compressive strength is extremely higher, very high when compared with concrete. Tensile strength, tensile strength is also very high for compact bow when compared with concrete. And compare this with uh, steel which is much, go which is going to be much heavier, right. Uh, so, something to keep in mind. So, you may have to, you know, model this as a function of the density, as a function of many different things. So, uh, it is not a fair comparison, but still it is not much lower for bones when compared with steel. It is not as comparable, it is not as uh, strong in uh, compression and uh, tension, but it is not very less either. Right? It's a, it almost has one third the strength in compression, right? about one sixth or one seventh in tension, something to keep in mind. So, uh, what this shows to us is that uh, bone although is a biomaterial has some unique characteristics right, that make it very strong and very uh, preferable for a biomaterial. And there are other things that come into the picture, uh, we will discuss this in future classes because if I had uh, the cortical bone, compact bone throughout right that is going to be an inefficient uh, model which is why you have the cortical bone and the compact bone. You have the cortical bone and the cancellous bone, you have the trabecular bone and the compact bone both of this. This um, is what helps the system to maintain strength while at the same time maintaining the total mass at a acceptable level something to keep in mind. Of course, uh, for given stresses right, uh, for biomaterials, for biological materials, the curves are very non-linear right, for ligaments they are looking like this. So, that means that for any given stress there are going to be two different strains at which you are. So, depending on the regime within which you are working for this stress for example, there are going to be two different strains in uh, for the tendon and etcetera, very non-linear and this is true of many soft tissues in humans. Also, the biological materials are not isotropic, right? it stretches much more easily in the transverse direction when compared with the longitudinal direction. So, it depends on the direction in which you are applying the force. So, this is an example of some biological materials and their uh, properties. right? So, some we can take uh, some examples of so, vertebra right, having an UTS of 3.5 mega Pascals, right. whereas if you take hair, so that is going to have 197 mega Pascals as the UTS, so, so very strong material. So, you would think that the hair is not a strong material, it turns out the hair is one of the strongest material if you take UTS as the measure of strength, if you take UTS as the measure of strength, then hair is a very strong material. So, it depends really. So, of course, the, you see a huge variation between the liver which is 0 0.024 to the hair which is 197, so, this is huge variation. So, the biological materials come in various properties, come with various properties. So, compact bone of the femur right under compression is 162, right. Uh, tendons, right, I am going to have 54, etc. right. Cattle ligaments, example, have. 2.1. So, some numbers as I already mentioned there is unisotropy that is 
that the properties, these properties are different along different directions. Right? This is absolutely true of the bone and the esophagus. Although these are composed of very different materials, one is uh, mostly an elastomer, esophagus mostly an elastomer, bone is bone, right. It is composed of both organic and inorganic materials, it is a composite material. Many biological materials are not isotropic, as are many uh, other non biological materials or well, the wood can also be considered a biological material as actually a composite due to its grain structure. S some materials are fairly isotropic, but, but most biological materials are not isotropic. Important to note that these properties vary with age, these properties change with density, which is why my point about keeping your strength high, exercising comes back. If the density is high, right? then the elastic properties will remain at an acceptable level, which is why it is important to keep the density high, which is why it is important to not allow the pores to form. What is this problem? Osteoporosis is the problem that happens due to pores. So, if the density is less, that means there are pores are more, osteoporosis is the result. This happens due to this uh, happens due to loss of bone tissue of biological reasons because of age. Yes. Of course, if I am to define strength as the largest uterus, then you know it is not bone that is the strongest, but rather the hair. Uh, but if I am considering the tooth enamel, right, which is not mentioned in that table, it would beat out even the hair, right, because the tooth enamel is the hardest biological material in the body. It is even strong, even harder than hair when you take UTS as a strength. Okay. So, in this video we saw stress strain curves and stress strain curves for many biological materials and mechanical properties of common materials and compared it with some biological materials. So, we took the biological material as the compact and trabecular board and compared it with engineering materials like concrete and steel and we looked at the material properties of various biological materials starting from hair and bone and ligaments, tendons, etc. We have not discussed the entire table, but I do encourage you to take a look at the entire table and compare for your own interest. Thank you very much for your attention.